This is what it looks like outside the workshop right now. But here we are inside. It's warm in here. We've got all of these fun things to work with, a lot of beautiful things around us. And I am heading to the art desk to continue on with this project we've been working on together. Hey everybody, it is Lynn from A Bit of Birdsong. Welcome to the next video in this series of the DIY art journal. And it's coming along nicely, I think. I'm doing this entire journal as a sort of a public project so that everybody can uh, go along and do the same things or do your own take on this thing. We are now on what I would call the inside cover, kind of the first spread. I wanna cover up these brads and I do have an idea for that. We've got this nice heavy paper. <laughs> I can hear the children outside playing in the snow. We've got this nice heavy paper, at least here on my desk that I've been working on. It's got some paint colors on it. Um, if you have corrugated cardboard, you also have some of that available. There is something so much fun about a house shape in art. You can draw little windows, you can draw your door, you can put all sorts of, you know, just whatever you want to. And I had decided from the very start that I wanted to make a house shape to go inside the front cover to cover up the brads and also just be part of, you know, the artsy part of this journal. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this piece off because I wanna use part of this paper that has the nice color and let's make this just a little bit narrower, more narrow. I don't know if narrower is a word and who's got time to worry about things like that. So we've got this and I think I'm gonna go ahead and cut here and here. And it doesn't matter if it's completely, you know, perfect, symmetrical, whatever. Um, and do I want that little triangle sticking up? Maybe I do. I don't want something that's gonna get messed up, but this paper is pretty sturdy. And what we could do is go ahead and cut, while this is loose, I'm gonna put it, put this paper right here at the edge of where that roof line starts. And I'm gonna just cut a second shape out that we can glue on top of that if that makes sense. So we're gonna glue this down and then I'm gonna put this on it. And I love that. It's got the paint going in two different directions. We've got this little bit of pink here and it's gonna sturdy up the top part there. It's really cold out here this morning. Having a hard time having this glue to even move. I've got my heater on. I apologize if you have to try to listen to me over the heater, I'll try to talk you know, plenty, plenty loud so you can hear me. So let's put that down right there and let's add this little triangle that we've cut out to the roof line. Do you remember being little and in school and drawing pictures and a house was always one of the most fun things to me because it was an easy shape. It was something that I felt that I could do and you know, all these memories of my own little place where I lived with my mom and dad. And it's still a fun shape to do. And you can add so many different elements to it. One of the things that is on the list of supplies is just random book pages. It doesn't have to be anything special. There's no particular theme. You use whatever you like and just, just go with it. I'm gonna make a window up here. Which side do I like? Oh my goodness, I just noticed something. There's the word dead right in the center. It's a hem. So maybe we can find an, a word to, maybe to kind of offset that to go in the doorway. There's the word resurrection. So let's make this the big doorway. I love things like that. Let's glue that into place. 
At this point, I'm going to take another piece of paper to put behind what I'm working on because I've used a lot of this. We will keep working on this too, though, and we'll go ahead and leave this corrugated cardboard in the background too to give it some more color. It, it'll be a place for us to put our paint out and just wipe our brushes. My other little scrap papers, my book pages, these pieces of paper, I'm just gonna put over here to the side so that I can still use those. I'm gonna take one of my black ink pens and I'm just gonna, let's make this a double door. We're just gonna do a little bit of scribbling around that. You can use an ink pen, you can use a marker, you can use a paintbrush and some black paint. It's cold out here. I've got a blanket on me as well as a sweater, a sweatshirt, and then a shirt underneath. But it's rejuvenating to get out here in this kind of this chilly, this chilly weather. Let's put some paint splotches. Maybe we will make a couple of little pink doorknobs. And who knows, we may end up covering those up again later. I better pull my blanket back. I don't want to get, get paint on it. Let's put some pink on this page. Pink is in my color palette. You can use whatever colors you want to use. It doesn't have to be pink. I do think I'm going to put a little bit of black paint out because I want this to feel a little bit more messy and defined, maybe. I want it to stand out a little bit more, so we're gonna have the scribble marks and the ink pen. Um, you know, sometimes there might be a chimney. Let's go ahead and just make a random sort of abstract shape up there. Now this is going to be fun. One of the things on the supply list uh, is a jar or jars that you can just use to make shapes with. And let's go ahead and just put a couple of circles up here. It's going to be messy. And then maybe we will do a bigger circle here. We could actually put part of one over here. Okay, it's giving it a lot of color, a lot of personality. Okay, I'm going to keep tearing out little bits of paper. On this page, I want to go back to my images here, and we're going to use one on this side, and I want to make a little bird's nest like for the theme of the, the house and just, you know, what we're doing with all of this. I want something that's going to fit. She's small enough. She's small enough to kind of sit in a bird's nest. I kind of like this too, just because of the way she's looking this way and the way the flowers are behind her. She's so sweet. She looks like a little bird. Let's cut this one out. Uh, it's got some elements in the background that I like as far as a nest, but it might not might not work out. And, and we're going to build our nest out of little strips of scrap paper. I'm going to go ahead and cut part of these flowers out because I just want it to feel a little bit softer. I'm going to put her up. Not all the way at the bottom because we're going to do our little nest. And these are just random book pages. No, no rhyme or reason. Old paper tears pretty easily, usually. <laughs> Ooh, I like that kind of that rounded. Let's, let's go ahead and just keep that. And just keep tearing off little pieces. I couldn't make that happen again if I wanted to. You could cut pieces if you want to. That's not so bad. So let me go ahead and glue. Come on, glue. 
I'm going to go ahead and start gluing in what will be the little nest that she's sitting in. And the nest needs to feel, you know, kind of loose and layered um, the way a nest really is. Birds pick up all sorts of little things. Another thing on the supply list is uh, just bits of string. This does not have to be anything fancy. Since black is in my color palette, I'm gonna use some of this trim. It's kind of like eyelash trim or yarn. It's got all of, all of these little strings. I don't know that technically that's what it's called, but I'm gonna go ahead and glue some of this into place. Let's put another piece in here. Ooh, that almost looks like a shawl or something for her too. I don't want to overdo it, but I do want enough that's going to show up. And we've got a lot of glue here, so we're going to put down, you know, just a little bit more paper for the nest. And maybe, maybe I can get between the string and the, maybe I can go have a piece of string sticking out. I don't know if I'm even making sense. I like that a lot. You just push that down in the glue and, oh, I love that. I love the way that's turning out. Um, I really do just love the way this is turning out. I'm gonna add white dots across here. Now, they're not standing out a whole lot because we've got some white in the background. They are standing out more on top of the pink, but I did want to add some dots and interest with, you know, different colors. And depending on your color palette, you might decide to add them anywhere. Um, I might put a little spot of white in the window to make it, you know, look like a little a little glare from the sun or something. And we could go ahead and just add dots around this page. It is, it's just so much fun to continue to layer uh, little shapes, just making little pencil marks all over the page or ink marks, um, paint marks. Oh, I like that. The last thing that I want to do to this page, and I have added this to the phrases on the printout that everybody has access to. So you can print it out or you can write it out. I think I want to mix things up a little bit. Like I don't want every page to feel um, like it's just been printed out, although that's fine too. And it could depend on what kind of printer you have. Uh, I've got just a black, another black pen. This is a gel pen. And I'm gonna say, I will, and I want this just to be kind of quirky and kind of quirky and whimsical. Let's put that there, I will. Now let's get to this page that's got some of the gold paint on it. And I'm gonna write feather. And I'm gonna write that in cursive. And move it over just a little bit so it's not on the curve of the page. I will feather. I'm going to put this in pink letters on another piece of paper that has some of the gold on it. This is a watercolor pencil, and I love that it's in pink. I'm going to go ahead and kind of put some water around these letters, get some of that pink color to spread out. You know, we could distress the around the edges of this a little bit with some of the paint that's left over. And of course, I came way into the thing here. It's okay. I think we get that it says my nest. And once this dries, you can come back and add more color. This is just our first layer. I will feather my nest and I want these to stay in place. Just a little bit of that color. 
I put just another drop of glue under there. Look how sweet this is. Oh my goodness. I love it. And you know what? See, it's okay if you get paint on the outside. We will just let that dry. You can come back to the front with things that, that you're using right now and add color. Don't have to waste any of that paint. In fact, let's do this. This is the paper that was behind what we're working on. I'm just gonna go ahead and not waste any of this. So that can dry, this can dry. I'm gonna open this up, look, I got paint on her. That is so typical of me. We're not, we're not gonna worry about that, okay? You, you can learn from what I just did, but honestly, I love this. I love these layers. I love, it. that almost looks like a feather, doesn't it? That's crazy. I love it. I'm just glad it's, it's, it's a happy accident. It could have gotten right on her face. But let me tell you, if that had happened, here's what I would have done. I would have printed another copy of this, and I would have printed, cut her out again exactly the same, glued it down over the top so that it made her more dimensional, and then added just a little bit more paper to make the nest up around her again. So anything can be fixed. Just have fun in your art journals. Have fun with color, with scraps of paper, old book pages. You know, if you don't know what to do with old pieces of thread, incorporate them into things like this. We're gonna add so much more to this. Thank you so much for joining me today, and I will be back really soon with the next video. Bye for now.